Welcome to the news hour. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan is facing terrorism charges after being accused of making threats against the police and judiciary at a political rally. Supporters have gathered outside his home in the capital Islamabad, warning of mass protests if he's arrested. The High Court has granted Khan protective bail until Thursday. Now, he lost a no-confidence vote back in April, but in a struggling economy, his popularity has surged. His latest rallies have drawn tens of thousands of people. Kamal Haider is outside Imran Khan's residence in Islamabad with more on the charges. Imran Khan's party leaders and supporters have gathered outside his residence in Banigala, which is situated on a hilltop. Now, earlier there were reports that Imran Khan would be arrested. However, his lawyers then went into the Islamabad High Court from where they were able to get a bail before arrest and therefore uh, giving some relief to the former Prime Minister. There was tension here. The supporters saying that they will not leave this place, nor will they allow anyone to arrest their leader. And the party had warned that they would then have a countrywide protest bringing life to a virtual standstill given the fact that Imran Khan's party enjoys support in two key provinces, also in Gilgit, Baltistan and also in Pakistani administered Kashmir. People of Pakistan have decided that they need a revolution in this country and it will come. And the destination is not that far now. It is the public reaction because no, uh, no military, no uh, agencies, no police, no paramilitary forces, no one can stand against the people of a country. We are the strength of our forces. Now it will be important to see whether Imran Khan will be arrested when he appears before the anti-terrorist court on the 25th. But this definitely gives him more time and also to be able to work out a reaction. Now, his party leaders have been coming from across the country to his residence. And of course, they will be mulling over plans on how to move forward. Zayed Ibrahim is an advocate at the Supreme Court of Pakistan and a former additional Attorney General and joins me now live from Karachi. Good to have you with us, sir, on the programme. Now, the authorities cite that comments made against the police and a magistrate constitute a terror threat. What do you make of that? Well, I think the threats made by the former Prime Minister at a political rally, uh, although charged and incendiary, uh, they don't constitute terrorism, and the Supreme Court of Pakistan has earlier interpreted Pakistan's terrorist laws as saying that these cannot be interpreted for a persecuting political speech. It does seem that politicians in Pakistan go through this ritual of arrest, imprisonment, uh, house arrest or detainment. It's like a rite of passage if you want to enter Pakistani politics. Are we seeing anything different here? Uh, no, not at all. In fact, it is the very same script. Uh, former Prime Ministers Benazir Bhutto and Nawaz Sharif also went through a similar uh, episode of being charged for terrorism or even treason. And after that, it was basically good standing to get back into office. Uh, we've got to understand, until a few months ago, Imran Khan was being uh, you know, they were being criticized and taunted for being a selected prime minister, selected by the establishment. And now he is a renegade rebel leader uh, who is really has galvanized the masses in his support. Indeed. I mean, the pictures that we're seeing are of hundreds of thousands of people, you know, waving flags and supporting him. So there seems to be this legal battle going on now about whether he can be arrested or whether he uh, can uh, preempt arrest with this bail order for the, at least uh, another few days. It's all getting very messy legally. So seeing those pictures of all the public, so very happy, or a large majority of them, do they have the stomach for a long, drawn-out political argument in the current economic climate that Pakistan is facing right now? Well, I think that is a very good question because Pakistan simply cannot afford a political wrangling of this size, which will have a former prime minister charged for terrorism. Uh, certainly his supporters won't uh, take it down very well. And the courts will have to come together. And they have already, they've given him a protective bail. 
And I personally don't see any chances of even the government trying to arrest him. But also from their perspective, they had no uh, opportunity to uh, sit back and take the uh, threats that uh, the former prime minister had leveled. The current Prime Minister, Shabazz Sharif, has quite a few problems on his hands, the economy being one of them, but huge climate change problems in the south of the country, in the Sindh and Balochistan province, where there was torrential rain and a great deal of flooding affecting millions of people down there. Is he taking the eye off the ball, or is the government taking their eye off the ball by focusing too much on Khan? Uh, yes, indeed, and in fact, it is being criticised for exactly that. Uh, and the mainstream media is being criticized that the real agony and suffering that the people of Pakistan have been facing, especially in provinces of Balochistan and South Punjab, has been ignored uh, at the cost of this drama in politics. And, of course, Imran continues to be uh, popular in certain quarters of the country, certainly in the north, in, in, in several provinces. Do you think, or how do you think this is going to play out in the next few days, or certainly in the next few weeks? Because there is talk about the general election being brought forward uh, by at least one year to October. Is that too much of a, a possibility? I think that is a possibility, given the fact that uh, the current uh, coalition government recently lost their majority in the most populous Punjab province. Now, that is under control of Mr. Imran Khan's uh, coalition partners. Now, if uh, Imran Khan wants an election at the national level, he'll have to dissolve his, his own government in uh, two provinces. And I don't think he has the stomach to do that right now. Certainly interesting times for Pakistan. We'll, of course, keep a very close eye on what's happening. Zahid Ibrahim joining us from Karachi. Thank you. Thank you.